just on the side of the thing. Two row stalking outings, one goal. To get a Roebuck for the 2023 Game Fair. <coughs> there is so much more. There's meeting Paul Childerley's gamekeeper father, Martin, for the first time, who once employed these two likely lads, obviously at different times, whose paths have crossed again thanks to the clothing brand Swazi. Paul is now working with the New Zealand Outdoor Clothing Company and Will Hogan is the new UK distributor. Both did their time with Martin. Uh, character building. I'd like, I'd like to think uh, it's made me the man who I am today. Who, 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 yes, anyway, he was a wind-up merchant, but I learned from the best. So okay. incredibly knowledgeable. Yeah, and to learn the trade off a, of a man of that, yeah, with that knowledge and enthusiasm, it was great. I was very lucky. You come beat him for me and then he come work experience and then he come to work then to give him a chance. And it's quite nice when you've got somebody who, who's really keen. You know, I've had lots of people work experience lads with me and a lot of them ain't got a clue, be honest. And uh, yeah, some of them are a joke, but I've had some good lads with me, be honest. So yeah, we're one of, one of them as well as Paul, you know. The reason for bagging a buck for the game fair is because top chef and author Jose Suto needs it for a deer carcass breakdown demo in the cookery theatre. So we are doubling our efforts to guarantee success. Contacted Paul and I said, I've got a really good idea. And Paul contacted me back and said, so have I. So when I <laughs> rang him, uh, he said to me, I said, he goes, you go first. I said, well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do basically a field to table of the deer that we're going to harvest and then have it at the game fair. And the game fair, we're going to break it down. And my good friend JB Gill's going to be there to help me break it down in the game fair, them larder on a Saturday. And uh, Paul said, I've had exactly the same idea. So basically, you know, great minds think alike, and here we, here we are in the middle of the Cotswolds, basically about to go out on a stalk. We'd better get on with stalk number one for this important spark. <laughs> so, I've heard already how Will was scarred, so did he scar, did he scar you as well? Uh, character building, like Will said. Yeah, yeah no, uh, do you know what? It's quite funny. It's, um, it's probably made me the boss I am. He's quite, like you said, he's quite a gentle soul. Yeah. He's quite, he's very calm, very quick-witted. He can cut yeah. you, cut you with a, with a bit of humour. You didn't cross him. <laughs> no, uh, no. I so, yeah. had, had a couple of crosswords once, yeah. and I knew I was in the wrong. So I learned quickly when yeah. you're in the wrong, admit it, yeah. and, and move on. Yeah, but right. he's, he's very quick-witted and yeah. good with numbers, and yeah. So yeah. it probably went easier on you because you were his son. Yeah. Maybe. I reckon so. <laughs> <laughs> The trouble with this time of year is the high cover. Unless you find an animal on a ride or straight down a tram line, you won't be able to take a body shot. So the buck's lay down in there, he's just, he won't, you won't see him walk past him. And uh, so yeah, it's making him stand up and have a little look maybe. The weather is not great. It's a good job Will's brought along a range of Swazi gear, a brand he first discovered as a keeper in New Zealand. With Paul's help, they're developing it for the UK and European markets. So I'm acting purely as a rep representative for them in the UK, so helping to find good retailers throughout the entire UK and Ireland. And make still looking? It, still looking very much, okay. yeah. yeah. Got to be the right retailers though, you know. Swazi is a great brand and it's, it's well known, it's well respected and it deserves the respect to be put on the shelves in the best shops. We want it in the best places, definitely. It's made by working people for working people. Moving forward, I think we can really push it forward now. Um, we've got new lines coming through all the time, so I'm, I'm optimistic. But that's the salesman talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once through the plantation and into the open fields, we come across a six-pointer in the wheat. It's not a shot either Paul or Will recommends unless you are completely competent. Young six pointer. Very thin and spiky. That's where he's on that open bit. He might get a clear shot here. See him all right? Yeah. Christened. <laughs> what is that you're using tonight? That's new 90. Okay. Uh, the Adventure 90, yeah. We've got the uh, other models coming over. 
It's a three away as well, so I'll just keep an eye on it, make sure he, he went down slightly right. slightly yeah. slower than I wanted him to. I don't know, did you see that Will? Yeah, it was all right. uh, yeah so he went down. <laughs> All I've got to do is keep an extra eye on him and just stand him crop. It's the rifle I took on from the Finlight 2. Um, great, great features like the Finlight 2, obviously cheek piece, nice um, soft hand grip. And they've got all the new bits on with the 19A, with the, with the trigger and the, the uh, system, bolt system. And they've still got the favourite metal magazine. Which is Can I go back just two seconds? You yep. said about, why would you spend more, pay more attention because it's a 308? Why did I pay more attention? You said I'm going to keep on it because it's 308. So why, why did you say that? Because I don't shoot a 308 very often. <laughs> um, it's really funny, you get you get your calibers that you're used to, the and the 308 is just I like it for bigger animals, body shooting, boar, for next shooting a row at how far was it in the end? I think he was probably yeah, 146. One not bad. I'm learning. Not bad, Will. Yeah, one four one five three, one four. Yeah, 149, so 150. So off the sticks, 150. Um, yeah, you just have to, not you always concentrate, you do always concentrate every single shot, but the calibers you're used to, you do think well, you're used to your caliber. You, just, you get, get used to what you use and that's it. Yeah. yeah. When you have to change, you chop and change so much though. I know. So, and it, yeah, and I it, don't understand it. I've got 243 and 308 and that's all I stick to. Yeah. And I'm awful with both. <laughs> <laughs> I good. like 308, it blows a good hole in them. Yeah, yeah no, 308 is good, 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 good round, but yeah. it's, um, I do change, you know, different guns, different models, different scopes. Are you, are you using the, the copper? Yes. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, yeah, back back to the copper, the old. The yeah, the blade, 162 grain blade. Again, it's a big bit of lead for, you know. Great copper. Big bit. Of, oh yeah. Go. <laughs> we we'll have to get get used to saying all these new yeah, sayings. Yes, yeah, a good big bit of copper. Yeah. Big, big bit. Big of copper. Big, yeah. Big, big bit of copper. <laughs> <laughs> copper. I have to make a new saying up. Yeah. I'm pleased that it's a rainy evening. Yeah, but that's just typical, isn't it? Yeah. Any other text for people would be perfect. Yeah. Think, yeah, yeah, we'll just bump into yeah. everywhere. I was a bit wrong. Quite tall. Yeah, he's he very, quite, thick, yeah. very thin, long brow yeah. tines on him. Good one to get, actually. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a fair shot. Oh, thanks, Will. I'll take that. David never gives me any compliments, apart from when I saved his life. I don't know if I mentioned that. No. <laughs> oh, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I happen to have to watch it a couple of times. You're all right. <laughs> We have an animal for Jose if we struggle when he joins us in a couple of days. It will be a blue peter buck, one we prepared earlier. Obviously a high neck shot because obviously the crop. Just Wanted to make sure it's free from the uh, top of the crop. Okay, yeah. so just explain that. So we don't do a lot of neck shooting, Paul. You know, we tend to yeah. do the body stuff. So yeah, but that's wh what... where would, where's the actual ideal spot for that? Well, this is the thing. I, I asked if you're okay we neck shoot tonight because I knew it's got tall grass like we were before and the standing crop. Um, you know, basically you've got a lot, you know, row in the summer haven't got a lot of fur, so you, you basically got the first inch of flesh and sinew and you've got the windpipe. Okay, so you can feel that there. So that's what you've got. That between the two thumbs is your, is your, uh, I'll do from here, down here. That's your sort of like target area. Obviously anything in the windpipe's absolutely a nightmare. I hit him just underneath the ear there. Um, straight down. Yeah, very pleased with that. Cracking buck, great condition. Um, but a good one to take really though. Know, it's a younger buck, thin buck. There's a lot of bucks. We haven't shot many bucks on here, so we need to take, take one or two off. Um, yeah, ASAP really. So we've been too busy doing other things, David. How's your buck fever? Not, not a tremor. Really? Why is that then tonight then? A little bit? I, 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 I actually don't know why, I just enjoyed it more tonight. I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, was, I don't know if you noticed, I was actually, I was pumping straight away. I was quite excited. Did you not get that? Well, it was oozing out of you. Yeah, <laughs> oozing out of you. Yeah. How about you, Will? How's your ooze? I'm fine. I'm actually, yeah, I'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I'll, I'll give you that, it was all right. Obviously you learnt well from your father. <laughs> uh, if you'd missed, I, I wouldn't have been able to let you forget it. <laughs> I wouldn't have told anyone either. So. No, it was a good shot. Yeah. Talking of Martin, a keeper all his life, David asks him 
What's been the biggest change or shift over his 40-year career? I can remember back in about 1972-73, I was in on a neighbouring shoot where I was loading and they used to have two syndicates, two double, ten double gun days in each syndicate. Then we come to about the third or fourth year we're doing that and then all of a sudden the head keeper said this is going to be a change. Today we've got an arms, arms merchant and, and scrap de dealers are taking the day. And he said this is a new, unheard of on this estate because it's all for lords and gentry. This is the first thing. And he said and this is what the thing is going to be to come. This is the shooting that's going to be to come, the Vallette shooting. And he was right. You know, and so, so what you're saying is that you saw a move from the, the sort of gentry side of it to, right, yeah. to, to basically working class business people who had money, disposable income, and this is what they were wanted to do. That's right, yeah. And, and also, also things have changed as in like commercial shooting, put the value in gamekeeping. So, you know, the gamekeepers, what, when I first started, we was on agricultural wage, wage, which was then, then about £10 a week. With married with a child, which is nothing, and pain per hundred birds shot, <laughs> and to what people are earning nowadays. Yeah. Wow, what a uh, difference! Yeah, what a difference. Mm. Stalk number two, and of course, Jose would like to be able to tell his own rose stalking story in front of the Game Fair audience. For those of you who haven't come across Jose before, he's responsible for educating and inspiring thousands of young chefs passing through Westminster Kingsway College into a healthy appreciation of game. I'm a senior chef lecturer at Westminster Kingsway College and some of you will know that by it being the premier catering college in the UK. So names such as basically Jamie Oliver went there. Some of the guys that you'll see on Great British Menu and, and uh, you know, Master Chef, the professionals, all that sort of stuff, is said, we teach those guys at work. Why game? Why are you so keen on game? Why are you a specialist in game? <laughs> I suppose the thing for me was when I was a young chef, if you cook a piece of beef, you can have lots of different types of, of beef you know, coming from different breeds of beef and it, and it will cook slightly different, but a steak's a steak. And for me, the differences between the six deer species that we have here in the UK and sort of, I think it's up to about 17 species of other game animals that we have, um, makes it a phenomenal product for chefs to use. It's an exciting product. You know, it's a product that only comes at certain times of the year. It's the most natural product that we can possibly use. It's, um, it's the thing that basically our ancestors used to eat. Uh, and, it, and it's good for us. You know, it's, it's a great, really great product. And we shouldn't feel embarrassed or, or, you know, or, or in any way have to explain why we can, why we can go out and harvest this product and bring it to the table, because it's so natural. Yeah. Jose is an experienced stalker three, and a Sacco shooter. His Sacco 90 is in the eye. post, yeah. so for this evening yeah. he's using poles with his favourite sticks. Yeah. Happy? Yeah, great. Yeah. For the first hour, the only thing we get excited about is a squirrel. This is a Although we're corn. sure squirrel butchery has its place, it's not the most visual show and tell. Finally, we start seeing animals. They are the wrong age and the wrong sex, but it gives us hope. We stop for a breather and a chat. What's your favourite deer then? For you? Um, I stalk a lot of roe. I get very excited when I stalk fallow because I just find them very challenging. I yeah. don't find roe as challenging. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in the words of another good friend, chef friend of mine, they do more damage than Roe. Yeah, yeah, they <laughs> do, they're, yeah. They're, they're a deer that does a heck of a lot of damage and it's, uh, and they breed so fast, you know, they basically, uh, they grow so quickly yeah. as well. So, but the venison of a fallow is fantastic. You know, it's really good that's to eat. That's a favourite then, is it? I would say it's one of my favourites. Is that like the pound for pound, sort of like, you know, value for money for or the... For chefs, um, pound for pound, it is going to be you know, uh, meat to bone ratio, a fallow obviously is better than a row. With time marching on, so do we, and yet we blank. Realistically, last week was going to be the fail because it was pouring with rain and windy, and literally dropped straight into a buck. Really? Yeah. And this week, you didn't see anything else, literally just walked round that back, come round, straight down to it, shot it, done. David was on the motorway before he knew it. But this man needs a deer for next week. So uh, I will be out this weekend. Next week, <laughs> today. Jose Wait, is not really a man to be beaten, and over Unlike the weekend the he sends day. us this. But we've been out this morning and we managed to get one. So here we go. This is the roebuck for the game fair. So don't worry, Paul. We managed to get one. So the show will go on. 
To discover more about the Swazi clothing range, go to swazi.co.nz. And to learn about the Sacco 90 adventure featured in this film, go to sacco.fi.